Hello, hello dear. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to visit two separate castles in South Ayrshire in Scotland. Now we'll be heading down the coast just a little bit. I'm already in Maybowl here so I'm almost there. Now these two castles are sort of twins of each other. They were both built around the same time and designed by the same person. So in some respects they are very very similar. Architecturally they look the same. But they're also striking in the differences. But I'll explain a little bit more about that as we get closer. Stay tuned. It's a very well known castle in Scotland. In fact, it's safe to say that it's one of the best preserved historic monuments. It's run by the National Trust for Scotland. Remarkable. This rather grand entrance is at Killeen Castle. Nice place to keep your horses. So this grand old building you see here was erected around the late 16th century. So by Scottish terms it's a new, new castle essentially, yeah. Of course there was a much older fortification here that dates all the way back to the time of Robert the Bruce. And that's because you're looking at the ancestral home here of the Earls of Carrick. So this castle here was built for the Kennedy family who are direct descendants of the Earls of Carrick, you know, later to become like the Earls of Cassillis. So this whole Ayrshire coast here is, is dotted with fortifications. Every couple of miles almost, you know, you've got Ayr, Greenan, Danua, <laughs> you've got Killeen here, Dormison, Maidens, Turnberry, they're all within a few miles of each other. That's probably indicative of the fact that essentially Scotland's been at war for as long as it's been in creation. <laughs> These older fortifications were becoming less and re less relevant because Scotland had now entered into a union with the rest of the United Kingdom. These people had enormous wealth, but they no longer wanted to live essentially in fortified dungeons, you know, as these ancient castles were starting to become. So they started to commission buildings like this one here. Now, Killeen was built by Robert Adam around the late 16th century. So whilst this earns the title of castle, it's not a castle in the true sense that you would expect it to be a fortification. It's more your sort of Downton Abbey type thing, you know. It's a really, really nice house for very, very wealthy people. But what started to happen towards the middle of last century is that these families started to run out a bit of cash, you know. Now, they're not poor by any means. Let's not get that notion into our heads, yeah. But it no longer was viable, essentially, to keep so many of these great houses going because they were extremely expensive, as I'm sure you can imagine, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to do, you know, the heating bills alone for something like this must be enormous. And of course, they had servants, they had staff, they had people tending the grounds. They were either sold off given over to the National Trust, like, you know, the National Trust for Scotland or the Prince's Trust. And if that happened, then they were preserved. Now, the next place I'm going to is Dalvoran, which most people will never have heard of, even here in Scotland. You'll see the similarities between these two buildings. And that's because they were built around the same time period for the same family by the same architect. So when we get to Dalvoran, you'll see that we have the castle. We've got the courtyard similar to this. And we've also got an old stable building. Now, believe it or not, this is where we used to keep the horses, folks. <laughs> that's a building to keep your horses in. Now, that's what you call wealth. Unbelievable. Right, folks, let's go. Look at all the deer over here. We've got a deer park down here at Killeen. <laughs> Obviously quite tame, eh? Hello. 
Hello. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Incredible, eh? Just look at some of the... So Cross Rugul's not far from here, it's just outside Maybole. I'm looking at 12.44 on that one. This one here, I think it's 1562. You can see it's lost its roof. <laughs> Be riding into the rain. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. A little bit less inviting than Tulane. <laughs> right, you can see the castle way over in the distance over there, but we don't want to go up there because it's absolute mud central. direction. Yeah, that's too small for the bike obviously. Turn it around here. <laughs> Where am I? I have no idea. Just head round over the grass. Probably need to go a little bit further round. I saw the castle, certainly saw it just as a before I came up this track. It's on the other side of that wall. Let's see if I'm able to get further around. See if I can get a bit closer to it. That's over there. I don't think I can get over there. It looks very overgrown through that grass. I've probably walked it from there. Okay, that's too overgrown that way. Let's see if we can go around a little bit. This road goes further around, obviously. Let's see where it takes us. What a place, eh? Unbelievable. Okay, let's head further around and see if we can find this. <laughs> we into this castle. Must be a way. Wow. Wow. Ah. Yes, there we go. That's more promising. Look at that. Incredible. See we can see a way in. So we're actually at the back of the castle here. As you can see. What? So this would have been the old courtyard obviously. And this here would have been the stables. Your horses and your servants and all that sort of stuff. So you can see the similarities. <laughs> as I said earlier. Probably the most striking thing is how similar they are, but almost not quite as striking as just how different they are, yeah? The Grand Tower would be at the front, just as you see at Kalein when you swing around the front of the building there from the sea, yeah? Look at this, it's incredible. Unbelievable. Incredible.
What a place. Now, I probably should mention that this building, this old castle, is widely considered to be the most, or one of the most haunted buildings in Scotland. Now, what we see here, these old beams, all this timber's falling down right throughout the main side of this building. There would, of course, be floors above, furniture, bookcases, all that type of thing. Now, much of this staircase, this is an elliptical staircase, and you find the same thing in Killeen, actually. But most of it's collapsed here, as you can see. Wow. Incredible. Now, the original castle is just over here. You'll have seen that in the drone footage, actually. So if you were to ask anyone in Scotland today if they can imagine Killeen without a roof, I don't think they could, you know, because <laughs> it's so well known and it's so well preserved and it's, it's a national treasure. There was a time in the not too distant past where maintaining these buildings was almost seen as being unfashionable, yeah? Especially through the sort of 60s and 70s and early 80s when there was a lot of unemployment, a lot of heavy industry was going down the tubes here in the UK. And people were asking the question, you know, we, we, can't, put, we can't put food in people's mouths, so why are we looking after this type of thing? So essentially they were allowed to go to Iraq and ruin a lot of them. Over a thousand of these historic buildings throughout the UK are now in this type of condition. Maintaining them just became far too expensive. It became too big a bind for the families. So around the middle of last century, the roof was actually removed from this building. And that was to make it uninhabitable, so that the family didn't need to pay duty or tax on it. Yeah. So of course, as soon as the roof came off, the building started to fall into disrepair really quite quickly. Now, there is hope for this because there's talk of it becoming potentially part of a larger golf resort or something like that. Who knows? And is the preservation worth it? Well, I don't know what type of income and what revenue that Killeen brings in now, but I know that it's significant. And it also provides a lot of jobs for people, you know? People working in the grounds, people, you know, working in the castle, that type of thing. A little tiny part of me hopes that they sort of leave this as it is. I think it serves as a reminder, you know, that time stands still for no man, you know. And this is what can happen if you take your eye off the ball. This could just as easily have been as great a national treasure as Killeen. This could just as easily have been Killeen, and Killeen could have been this, you know. It's all down to the money at the end of the day. But it's quite beautiful in its own right, even as it is.